What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over some good practices for space-time distortions, how to hunt your starter Pokemon shiny, and some things that you should never ever do while space-time distortion hunting. <laughs> So I was doing a stream not too long ago over on Twitch and I was doing it back when, you know, I had my my multi screen layout going on and something really crazy happened. This is something that can very, very easily be avoided. I was in the Coronet Highlands and I was just kind of, you know, waiting around for space time distortions to spawn. And what I typically do is I just kind of fly on over and when I fly on over, I just land at one of the ruins. Right when I hear what I still call the jet takeoff sound, you know, that 10 seconds before it starts, I then fly down and I start running around on Weird Ear. I did that and lo and behold, it turned out that there was a Pokemon that was spawned in, but out of radius of where I was while I was waiting for the space-time distortion to spawn in. And while I flew down, you'll hear this. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's right, there was a shiny Geodude just hanging out here. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I posted this on Twitter and many people were confused about what would cause these things to happen and exactly what's going on here. We know how to get space-time distortions to spawn in. When you first come to a region or as soon as you wake up from sleeping after a certain period of time, meaning when you're changing the day-night cycle, the morning, midday, so on and so forth, then it's going to start an in-game timer. And that in-game timer is gonna run. And at the five minute mark, you have a 10% chance. At the 10 minute mark, you have a 30% chance. At the 15 minute mark, you have a 50% chance. 25 minutes, 75% chance, 40 minutes guaranteed. The only thing that's going to prevent one of these from spawning in, intense sun, snowstorms, or thunderstorms. So at that five minute mark, whenever it's raining or snowing or whatever else, it's your option if you wanna sleep or you just wanna keep waiting it out. Me personally, I choose to sleep because I just want to reset that timer and go for it. And as I mentioned before, my best strategy to get a space-time distortion to spawn in is to sit here and do nothing because if you're on the menu or anything else, it's going to pause that timer. So just do nothing and one will show up. While you're waiting, it's your option on what you want to do. And one of the practices I like to do is I like to actually do what I call just a full check. The full check is basically me going to one of the highest points of the area. Fast traveling does not reset your timer or anything else. Getting on Braviary and just kind of doing a little sweep. Just look, look around. We know that if we go into a battle sequence with either the bandits or with the Pokemon, that we're going to have the game paused during that time. But as we're just kind of flying around and seeing what's going on and catching Pokemon in the overworld, that will not delay or reset the timer. So I like to just go around. You know, I'm trying to do my alpha decks. This is my actually this is my pre-release playthrough that uh, I finally have the shiny charm in now. So, oh, there we go. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to fly around. We want to see it happening. And then because we're already high up, we just head on over there. These typically take like three to five minutes for them to spawn in. And I've noticed something. There are three rare spawns and all the common spawns, right? Those three rare spawns, you can actually miss them if after it's fully formed, not in this forming state, but when it's all purple and crazy. If you fast travel during that, the rare spawns sometimes don't show up. What happened in that scene with the Geodude there was I just kind of came here, I landed, but I didn't look to like that side of what was going on. So I'm going to highly recommend if you are doing space-time distortion hunts for alpha Pokemon like I am, I'm trying to get all the alpha starters for my alpha living decks, and coincidentally I also found a shiny Decidueye and a shiny Cyndaquil. I'm in the middle of editing and I'm realizing that I'm sounding a little scatterbrained because I'm trying to play while I'm trying to explain what's going on here. So I'm just gonna kind of voice over what's going on now. Soon as you land down here, you wanna take a look around. 
because the way I missed that shiny Geodude is because I didn't look at the entire area. So as soon as you come to a space-time distortion starting to form, you want to look around. You want to make sure that none of it's going to be a shiny. Cool. In addition, if you're here during the nighttime and you have some nighttime exclusive Pokemon like these ghosts over here, then if it naturally progresses today, you're gonna see them despawn and respawn as something else because it's daytime. In the back end and you know, analyzing the game's code, these are called advances of the seed. The seed is all the different Pokemon in a row that are gonna be spawning there, right? When the space time distortion starts to actually come to fruition, all of the Pokemon that are here, the ghosts or if they're replaced as well as the Yanma and everything else over here, they're all gonna go away. They're all going to despawn, they're gonna be gone. And the game treats that the same exact way if you were to scare them or catch them without battle. When the space-time distortion is done, complete, 100% over, right? It goes away. All the Pokemon that were there are now going to be replaced with the next advance of the seed, meaning that they are going to be replaced with something else, and that something else might be the same Pokemon, might be a different Pokemon, might be an alpha Pokemon, might be a shiny Pokemon. So, it's a good practice to wait until after the space-time distortion is completely done. After it's completely done, you then do another check, because that exact thing happened to me yesterday when I found a shiny Graveler. And then also while I was recording this video, I started to explain these things and then I got sidetracked because I found another shiny Graveler. <laughs> All those Pokemon that happen after the space-time distortion, they also have a chance to be shiny. I love this game! <laughs> and of course he's yellow, so an Ultra Ball. Uh, the shiny charm is so broken in this game, it really is. Like I'm averaging about one an hour, if not more. And all of that comes just from what I mentioned before, waiting for the space-time distortion. Instead of just standing there, it's your option. If you want to just do a quick fly around, a little one by, see what's going on, I could have missed that Graveler if all I did was come to the area, go to the camp, wait, go to the space-time distortion, and then leave. Know what I mean? Now, when it comes to the actual space-time distortions, if you are going to be hunting the shiny starters, as well as, you know, Porygon and Magnemite and all those things, it's your option on what you want to do here. And I'm going to recommend what you should do, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing that's counterintuitive. Everything that I've mentioned up until this point, you should do. Instead of just sitting at camp, do the quick fly around, look for the Pokemon. If it's a heavy thunderstorm or a blizzard or intense sun, which is visible on the map, you may want to go back to camp and sleep. That way, you know, you can have the space-time distortion show up. Do your fly around. Once you see it start to form, land there, scope out all the Pokemon, wait for it, do the entire space-time distortion, see the three rare spawns of the area, make sure you go around. You see the three rare spawns are always in the same place. There's usually three evolution items or three rare items if you want to grab all the plates and the stardust too cool go for it and then just sit in the grass camp hang out it's your option if you want to face forward and you know see all the pokemon that are going to be spawning at you or a new trick that i'm doing which is i'm actually facing the wall when i face the wall the pokemon are going to then be spawning to the side of me and they typically walk away from me making back strikes easier be cautious though, because soon as you enter this space-time distortion, anything can show up at any random place. Like, when I entered a space-time distortion and my first set of common Pokemon, I got a shiny Alpha Heracross. Once you're fully done with the space-time distortion, look around again, see if there's anything. Then, you're just kind of waiting for another one to happen. And it's your option if you just wanna go back to camp and wait there, or if you are doing the flyby, I am gonna recommend you zone out, go to Jubilee Village, come back, go to camp, 
do your flyby again because they're all brand new Pokemon, brand new alphas and brand new everything else and just repeat the process over and over. You're repeating the same process over and over and expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. Now, what I'm doing is a little unique. Of all the Pokemon that can be in the common pool of the Crimson Mirelands, I have them all as Alpha and I have them as a Shiny. I don't have them as Shiny Alpha except for the Heracross, but I don't need them, so therefore I don't want to stay here. All I do is I come, I look at the three rare spawns, I grab the three rare items, and then I immediately fast travel back to camp, go to Jubilee Village, come back, and I repeat the process. By doing this, I'm cutting out probably three and a half minutes of the space-time distortion because it's not despawning. And I'm also sleeping until day, so I have a fresh start of the day and it's gonna be a more fluid experience. By doing this, I was able to get a plethora of shiny Pokemon. Yesterday, from just doing this area for a solid eight hours, because my YouTube partnership had trouble and nothing was monetized and you didn't see ads on the channel and my videos weren't promoted so I didn't post anything out. Instead, I just did space-time distortions all day. I had four regular Typhlosions show up. That's in the rare spawn and those are at less than 2%. One of them was an alpha at, what, less than 1%. I had one show up as a shiny. I had an alpha Quilava. I had these five alpha Pokemon show up between these Porygons, which these are all at less than 1%. I got a shiny Porygon and a shiny Cyndaquil, which is great because in Pokemon Home, this is gonna be my shiny Typhlosion entry. I'm probably gonna bring him to uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl and then evolve him in there so he's a regular Typhlosion. So I'm, now, I'm gonna have both entries in my shiny decks. That's fantastic. But yeah, just doing this strategy over one day, I was able to accrue this. Not even counting how many regular Cyndaquil, regular Porygon, Porygon 2, Porygon Z, and regular Quilavas that I saw. These are just all the rare ones that happen at less than 1%, and this was just over one day of playing. Granted, on three switches, but still, this is what I was able to achieve in that time. This isn't even including if you decide to do that fun little flight path with Braviary from the top. In the Crimson Mirelands, I got Carnivine, Barboach, Driftblim, Stunky, and another Hippopotas. All from just doing that, in one day, I was able to get these five random shinies, these two from the space-time distortions, a shiny Typhlosion, which is crazy, and then also that level 89 alpha Typhlosion, when that thing shows up, man, that thing is crazy. So when you don't see me post videos or do anything for a day, I'm testing stuff and I'm finding out how to get things to show up. It's also really cool seeing all the, the height differences between them. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you're gonna be able to hunt for your starter Pokemon, as well as a whole bunch of shiny Pokemon and just the best practices for space-time distortions. Guys, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.